The Queen's backbone. Her Majesty refused to be pushed around after Diana's death. Greeting and a gracious welcome to the world of royal staffs. A new docuseries has caused a stir, with its claims that Queen Elizabeth II refused to be pushed around by the British public following Princess Diana's death. ITVX's The Real Crown. Inside the House of Windsor, released today, dedicates its fourth episode to examining the Queen's decisions in the aftermath of Diana's tragic death in 1997. After the news broke, the Queen remained at her Scottish home of Balmoral, where she was on holiday with several members of her family. She was also joined by Diana's sons, 15-year-old Prince William and 12-year-old Prince Harry. The Queen's decision to stay away from Buckingham Palace and the crowds of grieving mourners that had gathered there drew sharp criticism from some members of the public. Lady Anne Glen Connor, Princess Margaret's former lady-in-waiting, stated in the documentary that the British public wanted the Queen to dance to their tune, didn't they? Former Archbishop of Canterbury George Carey added, Your Majesty, your country needs you to come and comfort us, but the Queen wasn't having that. Interviews with members of the public who were present at the time shared their criticism of the Queen's actions. One tearful woman stated, Our Queen should be in London with our people and they should know how all her people feel about Diana, while another added, I think it's disgusting, they've not appeared or said a word. Another woman described the royal family's behavior as very, very disgraceful. In the documentary, people can be seen weeping and wailing while demanding to see the Queen, as if they had known Diana. Meanwhile, William and Harry were dragged out to pacify the public, despite the fact that they should have been allowed to grieve in private with their family. Harry has since expressed similar sentiments in recent interviews. However, despite the criticism, Lady Anne Glen Connor defended the Queen, stating that she behaved as any grandmother would. She added that it was unfair to expect the Queen to put on a public display of mourning when she was experiencing her own personal grief over the loss of her former daughter-in-law. The documentary has sparked controversy and raised questions about the role of the monarchy in times of national tragedy. In the latest episode of the ITVX's docuseries The Real Crown, inside the House of Windsor, the late Queen Elizabeth II's actions after Princess Diana's death have been under scrutiny. The episode dedicated to Her Majesty's decisions post-Diana's passing in 1997 sheds light on the Queen's silence and her choice to stay away from Buckingham Palace and the grieving crowds that lined the gates. Lady Anne Glen Connor, the late Princess Margaret's lady-in-waiting, appeared in the documentary and spoke in defense of the Queen. She said, Queen Elizabeth behaved as any grandmother would. Lady Glen Connor added that the Queen stayed in Scotland because her grandsons, Princes William and Harry, were there, and she looked after them. The documentary also features interviews with members of the public who criticized the Queen for her silence after Diana's death. One woman said, Our Queen should be in London with our people, and they should know how all her people feel about Diana. Another woman called the royal family's behavior very, very disgraceful. However, the Queen's decision to stay in Scotland and away from the crowds was not without reason. The outpouring of grief was so overwhelming that Princess Margaret, who lived at Kensington Palace, had to keep all the windows closed to block out the strong smell of flowers. The Queen's Director of Government Relations, Angie Hunter, also spoke in the documentary and recalled that the country's Prime Minister at the time, Tony Blair, addressed the public while the royal family was not visible. Angie also recounted a moment when Prince Philip reprimanded her team over a speaker at Buckingham Palace, reminding them that William and Harry were grieving their mother's loss. She said, People forget that the royal family were up there in Balmoral dealing with this most terrible situation. I think, the Queen, didn't want to be pushed around. The Queen eventually returned to London and spent more than ten minutes speaking to the crowd outside Buckingham Palace, accompanied by her husband, Prince Philip. One person in the crowd asked her to take care of the boys, to which Prince Philip replied, that's what we've been doing. Although Lady Glen Connor spoke in defense of the Queen, the documentary's tone may come across as disrespectful to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who have been vocal about their struggles with the royal family. 
Nonetheless, it provides an insight into the difficult situation the royal family found themselves in after Princess Diana's untimely passing. In a recent documentary, it has been revealed that Queen Elizabeth II was deeply hurt by the criticism she faced following the death of Princess Diana. The documentary, Diana Seven Days, which aired on BBC One in 2017, detailed the events that unfolded after Diana's tragic death in August 1997. The documentary revealed that the Queen felt her priority was with her grandsons, Princes William and Harry, who were staying with her in Scotland at the time of the tragedy. According to former senior courtier, Sir Malcolm Ross, the monarch and her staff were upset at the public backlash they received. Despite this, it was the Queen who ultimately made the decision that Diana would be honoured with a royal funeral. Sir Malcolm also spoke about the decision to lower the Union flag at Buckingham Palace, which went against centuries-old traditions. He revealed that he knew the Queen would be very strong in her views, stating that she did not lower the standard on the death of her father and she would not do so for anyone else. He emphasized that these protocols are crucial to maintaining standards. Princess Anne, the Queen's daughter, also defended her mother's actions. In the documentary, she said that the Queen did exactly the right thing by staying in Balmoral with William and Harry, rather than bringing them to London amidst the chaos. Anne claimed that it was the only good thing that happened, as the princes had structure and people around them who could understand and support them during this difficult time. Despite this, the documentary also highlighted criticism from the public and media towards the Queen's handling of the situation. The Queen was said to be deeply hurt by this criticism but felt it was her duty to address the nation. On September 5, the Queen gave a rare televised speech, addressing the British public as both your Queen and as a grandmother. The documentary also covered the death of the Queen Mother in 2002, with Angie Hunter, Director of Government Relations from 1997 to 2001 claiming that the Queen showed more emotion in her speech to the nation and was more emotionally intelligent than she used to be. Lady Sarah McCorkadale supported the Queen's decision to keep Princess Diana's sons away from London after their mother's tragic death. She questioned why anyone would bring two grieving children to the city when they could be surrounded by their own family instead. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair stated that it was difficult to know exactly what the Queen was thinking at the time but believed she was worried about the risk of public anger and grief turning against the monarchy due to Diana's tumultuous relationship with the royal family. The Queen was obviously saddened by the loss of Diana and concerned about the monarchy's reputation, as she has a strong sense of public opinion. Thank you for watching today's video. To stay up to date with all my future videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.